Today we're going to do a very simple overview of how you connect to a data source and how you can transform data to bring it into Excel. And the reasons that you might want to do this is that you have data that you're exporting on a regular basis and then importing into Excel. Using a data source you can make a connection to that application or that database and hit the refresh button and automatically bring that data in. And if you're working with multiple systems or multiple tables within the same system, that's going to greatly reduce the number of imports you have to do, it's going to simplify your life, and it's going to ensure that you're not making mistakes while moving data. So let's look at this very simple example. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our data tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my Microsoft Exchange calendar and I'm going to evaluate the appointments or the pattern of appointments over a period of time. But first we want to look at this Get and Transform Data section in Excel. From here you can get data and what you're going to find is you can get data from almost any place. You can get it from other Excel workbooks, you can get it from JSON queries which would be through APIs on the web. You can of course get it from databases. Um, your possibilities are pretty much limitless. If it's data there's a way to get it into Excel. What we're going to use today is we're going to use data from Microsoft Exchange. The first thing we need to do here is tell Excel which mailbox to use. So we're going to use My Mailbox and I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see that it's going to load all of the different components in My Mailbox as different tables. The table we're going to work with today is the calendar. So this is going to give me a preview of what the calendar data will look like. And I know that off the bat I don't need all of this data. And this is really where the power comes in, is Excel is going to let you transform this data without understanding any code. So we're going to click on our Transform Data button here, which opens the Power Query Editor. And we have a number of components here. The first thing that we're going to look at is we have our query. Now I have two calendar queries here because I've done this once before, but we're going to use this one, which is Calendar 2. But if you have multiple queries, you can access them from this queries bar here. Over here you have your query settings. It's going to tell you the name of the data source that you're using. It's going to give you the properties for that data source. So it's going to let you name it and give it a description and do fast data load. And it's also going to give you the applied steps. Now pay attention to this box as we move through different sections of the tutorial. Everything that I do, it's going to catalog and make a step. So for example, if I come over here and I'm going to filter my folder path, first thing I want to do is be wary of any exclamation points. The list may not be complete. We'll load more. I want to filter so only, so I'm only showing my calendar and not these additional calendars. I click OK and you'll notice that it has filtered the rows. If I said, oh, that was a mistake, I didn't want to do that, I can simply delete that step and start from that point. So I do actually want to do that. So I'm going to click on my drop down. I'm going to apply a filter. I do notice that my list may be incomplete. So I'm going to load everything so I can see what the options are. Then I'm going to turn off the other two calendars. I also want to filter something else, but I'm having a hard time because there are so many rows. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, the columns that I don't need. So I'm going to do that by selecting the columns that I don't need and I'm going to hold the control key so I can manage multiple columns. So now I've selected the columns that I'd like to remove. You can see that they're in green. And I'm just going to come up here and click on the remove columns button. And again you'll see I have a new step and this is all the columns that I removed. If I made a mistake and I needed to bring a column back, I could simply just delete that step and those columns would come back. But what I've done is I've given myself a much smaller data set to work with. And because I've done that, I can come here and I can then turn off any appointments that were free. And what I'm doing with that is in my free busy time, appointments that are free are appointments that I've put on there that aren't going to use any time. And a lot of those are holidays. So we don't want to count those as appointments in my total. The other thing that I know at this point is I'm going to want to be able to show my appointments by year and month, maybe even day. So I'm going to have to find a way to split that data out. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my start date and I'm going to duplicate this column. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate the column. And you'll see I have a new column called start copy over here. And I'm going to take this column and I'm going to split this data. So I'm going to split by delimiter and I'm going to split by the slash and each occurrence of it which is going to give me two additional columns. And you'll see now I have one, two, three columns. This first column we're going to rename and we're going to make this into month. The next column we're going to rename and we're going to make this into day. We see that we have this third column which includes both the year and the time. So I want to select that column and I want to get the year and the time separated so we're going to split column again by delimiter and we're going to split it by space at the leftmost delimiter and that's going to give us the year column and the time column. So we're going to come and rename, make this year, we're going to rename the next one, and we're going to rename this one time. So now what you'll see is we have our month, our day, our year, and our time. And we can also see that again this is all under the applied steps. So I'm happy with the way my data looks. At this point I'm just going to close it and load it. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring that into Microsoft Excel. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this other connection from where I was testing earlier. We know that we're using our Calendar 2 connection. It's got 1890 rows. It has the data in the format that we thought it should be in. And it's on Sheet 8. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to just create a quick pivot table. From here I'm going to go ahead and put my year down here and my subject and my values which is going to give me my counts. And you'll see that I have multiple years and the number of meetings in each year and you can see that graphed out as well. So I can very quickly evaluate what is going on per year. So if we want to transition to looking at it by month, we can do that. Simply slide year out, move month in, and now we can see it load over time by month. What's nice about this, and the part that I want to demo, is the fact that if I add a calendar appointment, and we'll do that for today, so let me go do that real quick. And today is June 18th, so we're going to be looking at June here. We note that it currently has 148 appointments listed for June, right? If I come up here and I hit the Refresh Data button, we're going to see an increase in the number here. We're going to see this go to 1891, and you're going to see this go to 149. So let's do that. So now you'll see that we have 1891 lo rows loaded here and this has gone to 149. If we delete the appointment from Outlook and we refresh our data, you'll see that this now goes to 1890 and back to 148. So this is just showing the potential of how you could use a data source with data transformation to automate getting data into your Excel files.